What we've been doing is working with uh, our project partners in New Zealand and in Fiji over the last couple of years on a project focused on loss and damage, which is this emerging uh, pillar of the international climate negotiations. And our, our work has been focused on understanding well, what does loss and damage actually look like when we go to places that are already being affected by climate change? How do people understand what that term means? Um, and how is it actually being addressed in these places? So based on that work that we've been doing over the last couple of uh, years, um, our project partners at the University of Fiji, led by uh, Priyatma Singh, who is also at Linköping University, she's a doctoral candidate here. They have instigated this process to hold a workshop on loss and damage um, in Fiji to understand, well, what are the specific perspectives on loss and damage, what it means, what it means to address it, and what are various stakeholders' perspectives on these issues. So Priyatma and her team in collaboration with us and our partners at Massey University in New Zealand um, brought together these various uh, stakeholders, um, including community members, including people working in various ministries, uh, decision makers, um, people in civil society and so on. We all met in uh, Suva, the capital of Fiji, uh, in October over the course of um, some days in uh, to work out, yeah, these questions to just get some perspectives, get presentations, um, invite people to talk this through because this is a really serious gap when it comes to this topic of loss and damage. It's It's basically happened at the international level in the climate negotiations, and there's this gap when it comes to understanding more like at the local level and at the national level uh, about the various perspectives and meanings of loss and damage. There has actually been a little bit of um, contestation, I would say, around this term. There's no simple definition because it's very highly political, it's politically charged. So one person's definition might be for another person quite sensitive. But basically what we're talking about is when climate change impacts do happen, say for example, a, an extreme event like a um, hurricane that is supercharged by climate change, that the impacts that has, the damage it causes, the losses it causes to people, that this has so far not been um, recognised in the in the climate negotiations. All the focus has been on stopping climate change, i.e., mitigation. You know, lowering greenhouse gas emissions and stopping them, or on adaptation, which is where the impacts do happen, how can we minimise those impacts? How can we make sure that when a hurricane hits that the impacts on people are less, are minimised? So loss and damage is what happens when those impacts actually happen, that they're not adapted to, that they're not mitigated. So it's that kind of element of, or kind of, when we've failed in either mitigation or adaptation to actually address the problem. We had a whole range of different perspectives during the course of the two days. And the first day, what we invited people to do was to um, give their perspectives on the meaning of loss and damage. What does loss and damage mean in a Pacific context from the, uh, the perspective of Fiji, for example, or the perspective of one of the other islands in the Pacific, say, for example, an atoll nation that is very low lying and just a couple of meters above sea level. Um, and then on the second day, we we focused more on addressing loss and damage. And this is really a, a kind of 
cutting edge issue really because it's not clear well when these impacts do actually happen like people suffer damage or people suffer losses what does it mean to actually address that and there's various kind of interpretations developing in the international negotiations such as for example the role of insurance the role of compensation and finance uh, but we also want to understand for example from the community perspective what are they doing when these losses occur um what does it what kinds of losses are we even talking about can you quantify them in terms of in terms of economic damage or are there more intangible losses um and actually that emerged as a really key aspect of our of our workshop that these intangible losses such as for example the loss of cultural heritage due to sea level rise the way that it impacts on people's identity or um mental health uh and also this idea that if you've got all these hurricanes kind of barreling through year after year you never actually get the opportunity to get back to square one but you're constantly being kind of in a process of recovery and how damaging that is to a country like Fiji or another Pacific Island nation so this that's kind of um yeah that was the structure of our of our workshop and how it was organized the range of voices that we invited to speak um and then we had also people that were familiar with the the science of loss and damage um so the research that's going into the IPCC for example and we also had people speaking um sometimes remotely sometimes in person on on the those international negotiations uh and the structure of the loss and damage conversation in in the negotiations the climate negotiations one of the really major contributions that we made it through this workshop was the community input and bringing different stakeholders together to discuss an issue where even when this happens at at the national level often what you get is this kind of bubble of civil servants and people f- most familiar with the issue but and it might sound quite ironic but it's the communities that are kind of being neglected here uh especially their voices are like their solutions um their accounts of what is actually happening um the yeah so to bring those together to was a kind of unique and novel contribution i think that we made um one issue as well is that often this conversation on loss and damage especially at the international level it gravitates towards a conversation on finance on funding for loss and damage and that's a lot for example what happened in Egypt the negotiation was should we set up a dedicated loss and damage finance facility or not and that has a whole history about loss and damage as a form of climate compensation as a form of climate justice uh so all of that is kind of feeding into this workshop at the national level ultimately like well the conversation on loss and damage just should it should it be a conversation about finance and where finance should flow and what it means to have loss and damage finance as something distinct from adaptation financing but we what we tried to do was expand from that conversation to get to get those voices to get those perspectives to get a whole range of strategies through which loss and damage can be addressed so i think yeah we made a a a kind of novel contribution if i understood correctly it was really welcomed from the um fijians and the other pacific uh, representatives at the workshop uh, that we had really good feedback that this was something that hadn't happened before and also the some of the features of our workshop were also novel and and it was very valued by the communities as well that they had the chance to um contribute and to interact that there was more stakeholder interaction between more kinds of stakeholders than than usually occurs the major things that are happening in fiji are about sea level rise about food security about identity and 
um, nationality even, what it means to be a member of a particular community, for example, if that community is forced to relocate to a higher ground. Um, yeah, we heard stories in the communities about extreme events and how extreme events are increasing in uh, strength and in frequency and so on. But when I describe these events to you like this, in terms of their kind of physical properties or what they are, whether it's sea level rise or whether it's extreme events like hurricanes, I think what we risk doing is just having the conversation on this very material level. So what's really important is to kind of go beyond what kind of event it is, what kind of impact it is, to understand, well, how is this affecting people's lives? How is it affecting their social relationships, their interactions with, um, you know, various authorities? Um, and how are they kind of mobilizing uh, around this? How is it affecting the way they make sense of the world uh, and, the, and their place in it? Well, I, for me, what I'm most grateful for is that this is a, a process that's been led by the University of Fiji, that they have been the driving force behind this. And it's been a real privilege for us at the university um, here in Lynn Sherping to be able to collaborate with them on something where there is obviously a real need and value in, in organizing this. So, I mean, we obviously questioned is it right for us to make this long flight to Fiji in order to undertake this workshop? But once we were there and people were so, um, we were, yeah, we engaged in conversations with a whole range of different people where it was obvious that our presence in person, whether it was actually coordinating elements of the workshop, you know, we took responsibility for, um, coordinating different sessions, for being involved in the feedback, in the various uh, participatory activities, that that um, participation in person and the kinds of links we were able to build, um, including with the University of Fiji, other members of faculty there, and then all these other kinds of stakeholders, that, that there was real value there, that kind of maybe it can never justify completely the carbon emissions we spent on the flight, but um, I think we feel that it was a really worthwhile experience and something that I'm very happy to be, have been involved in, um, you know, because we've spent such a long time during the pandemic doing these various Zoom interviews, trying to work out what loss and damage means on a national and local level. So to actually be there and experience that in person and also to organise a workshop that could have, could shift the conversation in Fiji in productive ways. I think that was really gratifying.